continue. Uh, first from Bruce member care meeting on Thursday at 12.30 in the fellowship hall, planning for Thursday, December 9th, Christmas luncheon. So, Christmas is not too far away now. You're in church, remember you're in church, now be truthful, who's starting to decorate for Christmas? Oh, well, a couple of my friends and several of my neighbors have already beat me to the process, and they are already decorating. I might put the lights up to get ready. Other announcements this morning include a blood drive on Wednesday, November 17th, from 10 to 4. You may sign up at redcrossblood.org. So it's it's uh, time to prepare for the next the next blood drive coming. Our Advent study will begin on November 23rd. That for the uh, Tuesday morning session, which is at 10 a.m. And Wednesday, we will have uh, sessions begin at 7 p.m. Tom, this will not conflict with the most important show on cable TV, which is the curse of Oak Island. We, we prevented that conflict. Uh, let's see, what else? Point set of orders. I have, I have a point set of order form. You can find them out at the welcome station, in the uh, foyer, the entryway, the hallway, whatever you want to call that space, on the, the stand out there. So now is a good time to begin your filling it out if you're going to order flowers. They are due on Sunday, November 28th, so that we can get them ordered, ordered in time. And we have a pre-Thanksgiving dinner on November 21st. And you can sign up for that in the, the fellowship hall. That's a potluck. So November 21st, we will have a pre-Thanksgiving dinner for those who want to uh, stay together and uh, gobble up some food and fellowship time. So we'll have that opportunity. There's a sign-up sheet to bring things and a sign-up sheet to attend so that we have some idea of who, how many people to expect. They're on the table in the fellowship hall. And if you bring in a friend, you can mark that uh, it's me plus however many so that we have a, have a clue on that, that number. We'll be vaccinated. And, and please, be, please be vaccinated. Is the, the request. Other announcements? Oh yes, this little blue card has two sides to it. On the first side, well okay, the first side I'm looking at. Uh, sharing our joys and our concerns, if you will uh, print your joys or concerns, on, on that, on the other side is request for a pastoral visit. If you'll fill that out, if if you're new here, if you'll kindly print versus write, because uh, uh, I don't always succeed at uh, uh, interpreting everybody's handwriting. So if you can print, uh, I'm better at getting it correct. So a request for a pastoral visit, and you, if you share that, an email address, a phone number, street address, however you want to, to share, uh, and then uh, we, can, we can make contact. So those, those two pieces. Also in your pews should be a little black or dark blue folder for, for attendance. If you kindly fill those out, we greatly appreciate that as well. Uh, today, a little different because we, we will have a guest performing and uh, uh, we also will have a number of members from the church performing a special piece as we go into time of, of communion. 
for our visitors here, a word about Holy Communion in this space. That table, while we might have paid for it, does not belong to us. It belongs to Christ. The communion elements do not belong to us. They belong to Christ. Uh, and Christ opened an invitation to all who seek to have communion that it be available. So whoever you are, wherever you are in your journey, spiritual life, walk of life, you are welcome at the table. The way we are doing it during this COVID pandemic period is we have the prepackaged elements so that not everybody's hands are all over them. We will have an invocation for those elements. Then a choir piece will be performed after that. Then we will share it together in Holy Communion. But those elements will be distributed out into the pews before they sing. If you would like to take communion, take one of the, uh, the communion cups. If you would not like to take communion, just pass, pass the tray on to the next person. We do not make judgments as to whether you take or not take communion in this space, because all are welcome, and you all are of sacred worth with or without Holy Communion. Amen. With that, let us rise as we are able and join together in call to worship. Love the Lord your God. We love the Lord our hearts. Love the Lord your God. We love the Lord our soul. Love the Lord your God. We love the Lord our mind. Love the Lord your God. We love the Lord our strength. And now will you join with me in the opening prayer? Abiding and caring God, help us remember that you are present with us, calling us to be our best selves. Help us to learn to love ourselves, that we might learn to love our neighbors. With the caring example of Christ, we seek to be your love and care in the world. Amen. We're going to sing, Love Divine, All Loves Excelling. We're singing verses 1, 3, and 4.
And we're going to we're going to move on to our offertory. And we have a special. And Hannah, would you like to introduce your guest this morning? So we have Monica who's going to play a special. This morning, we have a, a prayer request for Charlie Martin, and Charlie called in this morning, obviously you don't see him sitting here. Uh, Charlie fell yesterday, and, uh, and when he fell, he uh, uh, hit his head, so he spent an hour and a half in the ER, he said. He's, he's at home. So he's recuperating, and, uh, and, uh, and Billy's keeping watch on him. Uh, so let's, let's hold Charlie in prayer for, for healing, for strength, and uh, coordination. And Chris Harris shares a joy. It's a joy to see so many new faces this morning. So welcome to all our visitors and guests, and uh, 
rule of thumb here at the first time you come, you're a visitor. If you come back, we count you as part of the family. Amen? Amen. From Rebecca, we have a prayer request. Her friend Pat, who is now scheduled for uh, surgery for cancer on, on November 12th, which was changed from October. Um, this is adding anxiety, so she, she uh, needs some prayers of, of uh, uh, strength, of calm. So let's let's hold hold her in prayer. She, Pat also wants the the surgery and treatment to be to be done with. Uh, prayers of joy or sympathy for Chris Harris for getting old. <laughs> Let it forever re be recorded that he's older than I am. <laughs> Chris turns 51 on uh, the 18th. So, uh, uh, you want me to make you a cake? Yeah. <laughs> With, With what? Sugar. With sugar and black frosting. Uh, <laughs> I pick on him all the time because his birthday is a month before mine. Uh, let's see. <laughs> I'm not catching all the other ones. Your concern. Who was overnight? What's? I was looking at the temperature. Oh, Chris is Chris is going in for a routine routine check. Uh, so let's let's keep him him in prayers. And test results. Praying for negative test results. So he's at the age of fifty. Time to do those tests. Uh, Barb Stapleton lifts up her sister-in-law, Dolly, has had an MRI that has shown uh, brain cancer has shrunk by 99%. Can we get an amen? And so let's let's keep praying that that goes from 99 to to uh, 100% eliminated. Uh, your other joys and concerns. I'd like to introduce my brother Nate. He's here visiting from Arbor Springs, waiting for surgery at Henry Ford. Amen. Nate, we've been holding you in prayer, and we're going to continue to hold you in prayer for full healing. Others. Judy. My neighbors, Sherry and her daughter, Riley, so, uh, Judy's neighbors, Carrie and Riley, are both very ill. Let's let's hold them in prayer. Uh, I have a friend of mine, Pat Nye, with me this morning. Good morning, Pat. Good morning. And, and welcome. Thank you. Prayer of blessing. <laughs> she, she, did you hear what she said? <laughs> she said... It's not as mean as I am. <laughs> My halo is held together by glowing duct tape. <laughs> Let's hold Kathleen uh, uh, Fisk in prayer as she uh, has received a positive diagnosis to COVID. So let's hold her in prayers for healing and strength uh, and getting, getting rid of that, uh, that virus. Others. I'll lift my prayer of joy. Uh, I signed up for this blood pressure study, and one of the things they had to do is make me take uh, uh, blood, some blood work, and one of those was for A1C uh, because my previous score in September was extremely high. It was an 11.3. Uh, so one month later, I took that uh, test again, and it's an 8.4, and, and I guarantee if I take it again next month, it'll be a, a, probably around a 6. Uh, so, Amen. Uh, but uh, 
to go from 11.3 to 8.4 in a matter of five weeks, I think is pretty good. And uh, for those of you out there, just don't drink Mountain Dew. <laughs> but the Mountain Dew is better than the water out west, and that's where, where the score jumps were. But uh, we're on, on the right track there. So prayers to, to keep that in the right score. Any other prayer concerns? Will you join me in an ad? Oh, Judy. I have a joy that my son finally got called back to Motor City Casino because his face was shut down. To where? Motor City Casino. So Judy's, Judy's son is back in Motor City. Uh, the pastry chef got called back to work. So blessings, uh, blessings for him getting back, back in that... Uh, that role. Will you join me in two for prayer? Heavenly Father, we come before you this morning to seek the presence of your Holy Spirit in this space. We come with fervent desire to walk with your Spirit, to walk with you, and to build your kingdom in this place and wherever we are in our journey. Lord, you know the bumps along the road. You know those ruts that we get into. And you know what we need and the people that we need around us that help to give us the push to get out of the rut. And that to take us by the hand and guide us to walk with us and be with us in the journey. Lord, you know those who are suffering from illness of body, mind and of spirit. You know those who struggle with questions and concerns. And we lift them to you, O oh God, as you and you alone know their every, every concern. You know all our concerns, and we lift them to you. And we ask that your spirit speak to each of us in ways that give comfort, that give strength, and that challenge us to walk and to move forward. Lord, we pray for one another and we pray for the church. We especially lift up our brothers and sisters in Iraq, in the Nineveh Plain and northern Iraq that are suffering, suffering of oppression and genocide. Their pain and their struggle and their diaspora is real. And we ask for your spirit to comfort them and strengthen those who remain and to guide us in ways that we may help to sustain and help them to rebuild in their journey with you. We pray for our president and our Congress and all of our leaders in the midst of chasms and divides we know their hearts are all in the direction of trying to do what will help improve our nation so speak to them and guide them show them the paths of courage and of strength Guide them in wisdom. And guide us, O oh God, in ways that we too may help to move this nation forward. We need not rely on somebody else. We have the ability to do it ourselves with your spirit. Guide us in ways that we may build your kingdom, that we may grow your kingdom that we may be the light of your spirit in this place. Hear all our prayers that are spoken and those that we hold dear to our heart in silence. We lift all our prayers to you, O oh God, and to you in heaven we say, Amen. Robert up now as we will share 
them in scripture reading. Our Old Testament reading is from the first book of Kings, chapter 17, verses 8 through 16. Then the word of the Lord came to him, saying, Go now to Zarephath, which belongs to Sidon, and live there, for I have commanded a widow there to feed you. So he set out and went to Zarephath. When he came to the gate of the town, a widow was there gathering sticks. He called to her and said, Bring me a little water in a vessel so that I may drink. As she was going to bring it, he called to her and said, Bring me a morsel of bread in your hand. But she said, As the Lord your God lives, I have nothing baked, only a handful of meal in a jar and a little oil in a jar. I am now gathering a couple of sticks so that I may go home and prepare it for myself and my son, that we may eat it and die. Elijah said to her, Do not be afraid. Go and do as you have said, but first make me a little cake of it and bring it to me, and afterwards make something for yourself and your son. For thus says the Lord, the God of Israel, the jar of meal will not be emptied, and the jug of oil will not fail until the day that the Lord sends rain on the earth. She went and did as Elijah said, so that she, as well as he and her household, ate for many days. The jar of meal was not emptied, neither did the jug of oil fail, according to the word of the Lord that he spoke by Elijah. Our Gospel reading it's from the book of Mark, chapter 12, verses 38 through 44. Let us, if we are able, stand for the gospel. As he taught, he said, Beware of the scribes who like to walk around in long robes and be greeted with respect in the marketplace and to have the best seats in the synagogues and places of honor at banquets. They devour widow's promises and for the sake of appearance say long prayers. They will receive the greater condemnation. He sat down opposite the treasury and watched the crowd putting money into the treasury. Many rich people put in large sums. A poor widow came and put in two small copper coins, which are worth a penny. Then he called his disciples and said to them, Truly I tell you, this poor widow has put in more than all those who are contributing to the treasury. For all of them have contributed out of their abundance, but she, out of her poverty, has put in everything she had, all she had to live on. The word of the God to the people of God. Thanks be to God. Now I invite you to sing as we will sing in 
2036, 2036, which is give thanks. Today's message, out of the window, widows, out of the widow's scarcity, richness of blessings, or out. We have two different stories that give measure to that. In the Hebrew Bible, our Old Testament lesson is about a woman who really has some scarcity. And here comes one of the prophets of the Lord, Elijah. And Elijah's passing along, and he says to this woman from a short distance, Lady, please give me some water to drink. Now Elijah could have taken himself, ran over and found the spot with the water and took a cup and got it for himself. But he had been commanded to go to this place in Zarephath and find a widow. But Elijah doesn't stop there. 
Elijah has the gall to say to this woman, and when you bring me that water, bring me some bread, bring me something to eat. You remember what her response was? As the Lord your God lives, I have nothing baked. I have only a handful of meal in a jar and a little oil in a jar. She says, I'm not gathering the sticks so that I may go home and prepare for myself and my son, that we may eat it and die. If you were Elijah, what would you think when the woman says, I have this little bit for my son and me to eat so that we can have one last bit of food before we die? So obviously there's been a struggle financially. Has there been a time in life where you've experienced that struggle of not knowing? where that next meal is coming. You've struggled with what small portion you have and then comes along somebody else seeking a portion of that. You've been taught to be a person of hospitality. You've been taught to be a person that is giving. You've been taught to be caring and compassionate and yet, it's at this very moment when you have nothing to share. And Elijah shows up and says, please, along with the water, make me something to eat. Here's your choice. Do you feed him? Or do you feed your family? Do you trust that if you feed him, you will not be left without. The quandary that the widow has is not a small quandary. It is a major one. It is about existence. It's about life, sustaining. It's about providing for her son. We don't know how old the widow was. 